Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, bringing you another cryptocurrency video. Today, I want to explain why Bitcoin fees are so insanely high, because a lot of people have been curious about this, including myself, so I did a bunch of research and figured out exactly why Bitcoin fees are so high. So let's get right into it. But before, well, before I get into it, if you enjoy the video, please think about leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps my channel. And also, I have a lot of other inf informational videos and also a lot of other videos talking about my own journey in cryptocurrency on my channel. So if you're interested in those, go ahead and check them out. All the links to all these informational websites I'll be using in this video are in the description down below, so feel free to go and check them out and do your own research. I encourage you to do your own research. So let's get right into it. This right here, this number right here, is what this entire video is about. $30.83 transaction fee to send about $130 worth of Bitcoin. Why would I spend $30 to spend to send $136 worth of Bitcoin. That doesn't make any sense. Bitcoin transaction fees used to be so low. Why are they so high now? Litecoin, Litecoin, right? Litecoin, I can show you a chart right here of Litecoin's average fees. Litecoin fees right now are like 90 cents. Why is Bitcoin fees so high? Well, let's explain that. Basically, let me fix this chart first though. Goodness gracious, my computer's lagging. Oh man, here we go. Okay, so basically what a fee is. I should explain what a fee is first. What a transaction fee is, is it's, a, it's an amount of Bitcoin that you attach to your transaction fee to pay the miners to make them put your transaction ahead in the block. So what does all that mean? Let's unpack that. I should explain what a block is first. Basically, what happens with a cryptocurrency and a blockchain is a miner will use computing power to solve a cryptographic hash, which will solve a block, which will then get put into the blockchain. And in those blocks are transactions, and those transactions are the transactions you're trying to send. So if I were to, so if I were to try and send this transaction, it would get put into a block and get locked into the blockchain. And this Exus wallet over here would scan the blockchain and realize, hey, I just received this much Bitcoin. So when a miner solves a block with their mining, with their computing power, they solve the cryptographic hash of the block, then they get to choose what transactions go into that block. So what does that mean? Basically, it's an auction system. If you, you, well, I forgot to explain something. Something with Bitcoin fees is that you're actually able to set your own Bitcoin fee, your own transaction fee. You're able to set how much you pay in fees. Now, a lot of softwares like Coinbase and Exodus Wallet won't let you do that. But if you have, if you have your private keys, you can do that on a website called blockchain.info. You can do that in different ways. If you're, um, a lot of uh, the Ledger Nano S, I think, allows you to set your own transaction fees. It's a more advanced thing, and you need, you need to be careful with it because you could end up losing your transaction if you do it wrong. But you can actually set your own transaction fee. It is a voluntary fee that you give to the miner to incentivize the miner to choose your transaction to put into their block. What does that mean? When a, tra when a miner has mined their block and they're looking for the transaction to put into the block to fill the block, the block has to only so much space. A block is one megabyte in size, and the fee is not calculated off of how much Bitcoin you're sending. It's calculated off of how much room you take up in the block. So if we look at this chart right here, this shows unconfirmed transactions and transactions I've sent, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But this says that the average transaction, the average, the median transaction size is about 226 bytes, which is pretty accurate. So if you have 226 bytes, if you're taking up 226 bytes in the block, then you're going to have to multiply that by the amount of Satoshis you're willing to spend. So this this chart, I'll explain this chart now. This chart shows the fees in Satoshi per byte all the way down, and then it also shows two bars, which is transactions that have completed today and unconfirmed transactions. Now, unconfirmed transactions is the bar on the top here, and transactions that have gone through today is the bar on the bottom. And this number over here is the Satoshi per byte cost. So if we have 20, if we have a median transaction size of 226 bytes, let's just say our transaction is 226 bytes, and we multiply that by 10 satoshi, then we get 200, uh, uh, 2,220, uh, 2,260 satoshi, sorry, which comes out to 31 cents. You are you are able to spend that much, that little, I should say, on a transaction fee. All these people down here are spending like. All these people in this first bar right here are spending under a dollar, and this first two bars, first three bars, are spending under a dollar in transaction fees. And as you can see, some of them are getting through. A lot of them aren't, though. When you when you voluntarily put a very low transaction fee, you're less likely to get chosen by the miner to be put into the block. And when you're less likely to get chosen by the miner to put into the block, 
then you have to wait for the next miner, and then the next miner, and then the next miner. The miners are out to make the most money. I'm, I mine Bitcoin on Hashflare, so we're out to make the most money. So we're obviously going to pick the the uh, transactions that have the most that have the most the biggest fee on them, so that we can make so that we can make the most money, right? So why would a miner want to pick up some of these transactions down here? They're paying 31 cents and taking up 226 bytes when they could pick someone down here who's paying like 10 dollars. Why would you, and taking up the same amount of space? It's a capitalistic system. They're out to make the most money that they can. So, when you are trying to send a transaction, you need to be able to balance how fast you want the transaction to get there, and how much money you're willing to spend on transaction fees. Now, like I said earlier, Coinbase and Nexus Wallet and other software sometimes don't let you set your own transaction fees, which is very annoying because they set them higher than they than you need to be. They they this $30 fee would basically be like sending one day shipping on Amazon. Spending a very high fee is like getting one day shipping on Amazon. It's like spending a lot of money to get overnighting on FedEx. Basically, when you spend a very high fee, it allows, it gives the incentive to the miner to pick your transaction and pick your transaction first so it goes through in the next block. But if you send a low transaction fee, like down here at 170 Satoshi per byte, which is still quite expensive, might I add. You're more likely to get picked by the miners because they get the miners when this goes will eat up this entire pool right here, and you'll be in that pool. So, what is the solution to this, and what is the the um what are the prospects short term for Bitcoin? Because this is getting ridiculous. We can't have Bitcoin is not going to be able to function with fifty five dollar average fees and a thirty dollar fee on here on Coinbase and all kinds of insanely absurd fees. How do we fix this? Well. The way that we fix this, in short, is we get rid of these top bars here. If all these top bars are gone, if all these top bars can fit into one block before the block is mined, if this never surpasses one block, then it is basically fixed. You can spend whatever you want, you'll get picked in the next transaction fee. Which is why if we go here to this chart, and we look at the year for the average transaction fee historical chart, and we go out here, um, up here in the top right is the fee, the average fee. If we look here for the most of, for a lot of cryptocurrency, the fee was less than a penny. Less than a penny, less than a penny. At some points, there's not even a fee at all because you didn't need to have a fee because they would because your transaction would get picked no matter what because there wasn't enough transactions to completely fill a block. Way back here at the beginning, the fees were very, very cheap, and now they've gone up to $55. It's ridiculous. The reason that fees are so high also is because there's a lot of unconfirmed transactions in the network right now. There are 181,000 unconfirmed transactions in the Bitcoin network. So if a block can only hold, say, 20,000 transactions, they're going to pick the 20,000 transactions that have the highest fees, and the other 160,000 transactions are sat there hanging, waiting for another miner to come by and hopefully pick them up. And the miners are out for themselves, so they're going to try and pick the they're going to pick the transactions that make the most money for them. So they're going to pick this top of the chart down here that have that has the most transaction fees because the fees go to the miner. The way that we can get fees down is if, say, I'm throwing a number out here, the amount of transactions you can fit into a block depends on the size of the transactions, but let's just say for argument's sake that there are 20,000 transactions that can fit into a block. If there were 20,000 transactions that can fit into a block and this number was below 20,000, that means that every time a block is solved with by miners, they would have to put every single transaction, they wouldn't have to, but they would put every single transaction in the unconfirmed transaction mem memory pool, which is where the transactions sit before they get before they get sent. If this number right here was if this number right here was below the number of transactions that can fit into one block, and it was always below the number of transactions that can fit into one block, you could in theory put no fee on your on your Bitcoin transaction, and it would go through in, in the next block. Just a few months ago, you used to be able to spend hardly any money, like a dollar. On transaction fees and you would get into the next block it might take a few it might take a few blocks for it to actually go through I remember I was spent I was sending Bitcoin a long time ago and it went through in like two blocks it was very very fast because even though I spent like two dollars in fees but now I have to spend thirty dollars in fees because coinbase won't let me spend anything less if this number goes down below the number of transactions that can fit into one block then we'll be a lot better off the lower this number is the lower the fees are gonna be that's a that's a corollary. That's not a cause. That's not a causal relationship, but it is something that you can look at. If you look at this number of unconfirmed transactions 
and it's over a million, for example, the fees are probably going to be over 100 or $150 to try and get your transaction through quickly, which they were not long ago. This was at 230,000 confirmed transactions. If you're looking to if you're looking to move cryptocurrency, I would highly recommend moving Ethereum or Litecoin instead for right now. If you're looking to move Bitcoin like I am because I bought $150 in Bitcoin and I'd rather have it on my hardware wallet, what you should do is you should wait until this number, the unconfirmed transactions, goes down. When this gets down to like 50, 60, 70,000 unconfirmed transactions like it normally is, right now there's a lot of unconfirmed transactions because there's a volume peak, there's a volume climax happening in the market because the market has gotten so, because Bitcoin has crashed so much, a lot of people are trying to buy and sell, so there's a lot more volume in the market. So this number is a lot higher than it normally is. Normally this number is lower. If you're looking to move Bitcoin and you don't want to spend that high of a fee, either you're going to need to use a different software. Hang on. Excuse me, sorry. Either you're... I, I, I keep sneezing. Sorry. <laughs> either you're going to need... Let me restart. If you're looking to send cryptocurrencies and you want to do it the cheapest, fastest way, either you're going to want to send Ethereum or Litecoin because they have very low transaction fees, or you're going to want to wait for this number to go down and then send your feed there so that your fee, so that you can actually get your Bitcoin sent fastly and cheaply. If you have access to your private keys like you do on Exodus Wallet, you can use a website called blockchain.info to set your own fee. And then mm, be careful because you might end up getting caught back here in the backlog of fees where you're not gonna, where you're not gonna get sent. If you're going to use your own fees, you should use this website here, which, I, which will be linked in the description down below, with, in the description down below. And make sure you send your fee, presume, ideally, with one of these Satoshi per byte um, markers where this bottom bar is higher than this top bar. That means that these are actually getting picked up when the next block goes through. And also look at this number over here, delay and time delay in minutes and blocks. So that if, if you're looking to send this money to your hardware wallet, then you can send, you can send a very low fee and just wait for it to get there. But if you're looking to send something fast, you're going to need a high fee. Anyway, guys, I've been rambling. You've been cool. Please leave a like and subscribe. That was really cheesy. <laughs> if you've enjoyed the video, please think about leaving a like and subscribing. It really, really helps my channel. I do a lot of informational videos on my channel like this. I'm going to be doing videos, doing technical analysis of where I think Litecoin and Ethereum are going to be going in 2018. I've already done one explaining where I think Bitcoin could go in 2018. So if you've enjoyed the video, please think about doing those things. It would really help me. It would be my Christmas gift. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.